Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by Nate Weitzer. He's on the East Coast as always, and we are looking at NBA playoff props for finals game four here. Uh, we definitely don't know if we're going to have any more hoop after this, so it's been a fun ride, but we'll see. We've got best bets up alongside these playoff props as we always do, so make sure to subscribe to that page and continue to follow along to get all of the action we're bringing you on that YouTube channel. Also want you to head to thelines.com. Use that prop finder tool that we have under the NBA tab. You can see all of the odds and lines that are available to you from these sports books, giving us bets for this NBA Finals. Nate, let's go ahead and get right into your first uh, NBA play a prop here, talking about my guy, Jalen Brown. About to be the Finals MVP, Jalen Brown. Uh, so, I mean, at least at least we got that Futures uh, earlier in the series. Uh, he's now minus 320 or so. But I, I think I'm going to take him without the points here, over 10.5 rebounds and assists. Just indicating, like, I don't know if he's the best player, you know, whatever that discourse is, but he's the clearly the leader of this team. And, th- and that means, like, making the right play on both ends, which he has done in spades these last two games in particular as they've lost Porzingis and had to be more of, like, a, a team led by Jalen Brown. I mean, he's been he's been fantastic all series, but these last two, you see these spikes where he's getting 12.5 rebound chances, he's getting 13 potential assists. Yeah. Uh, including what eight eight of sixteen rebound chances in game three, six of them were contested, and so like, what's changed? Um, Luca is trying to get Tatum on the switch. I mean, he started the series trying to get D White on the switch, but like it's been Tatum more often. Yeah. <clears throat> the Celtics have have rotated behind that, and then all of a sudden Jalen is taking Tatum's responsibility on the big right, and so that's yeah. how he got a lot of those defensive rebounds. And then on the other end, like he's just been the biggest problem for Dallas as as far as like rim pressure as far as getting two feet in the paint. Uh, Tatum was able to do that a little bit more and he hit some shots, but he's still, you know, more of the finesse guy. It's Jalen Brown is the guy who scares your defense and you're like, Oh, uh, and so they have sending too much help at him. He actually had these eight assists in last game yeah, with two minutes left in the third quarter. So, and I mean, then he closed the game out scoring, but if, I mean, if he continues to be a problem for Dallas, he, he could be the one dishing down, to, down the stretch here. Uh, I think one way or another, though, he, the rebounds and assists will total over this over double digits, and it's it's strange to say because he was a guy who I would fade 10, 10 rebounds assists, be like he never passes, he never rebounds, but he's like now he is completely bought into being like the 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 su- supercharged Drew Holiday in that sense of just like okay. whatever we need, like I'm doing it, uh, I'm getting this ring. Just. All the love for JB right now, man. Uh, really, really impressed the hell out of me in these last two series, honestly. Like, when you say he's, you know, the the leader, what, what I think of is he's he's the clutch guy. Like, he he's the dude, like, that, that, that he won the game with that shot, right, at the end with, with the, uh, the little, like, let's say 18-footer that he took, um, where he kind of clutched, clutched, and then pulled it. I mean, I, I was like, that's going in uh, for sure. This man has been so clean in this second half. Um, and it, it really it started with that third quarter, obviously, where he just came out firing. He to, had plenty of good looks. I, I think to help your your cause here, I would I would consider how because by the way, you said exactly what I was going to say, which is I thought I was coming into this series ready to fade rebounds and assists for for Jalen Brown at like nine and a half. I was like, great, whatever. Like he's not interested in doing that stuff quite as much, and he's going to have to guard Luca. But like you said, Luca's legit hunting Jason Tatum. Who thought it would come to the end? Let's be real. Jason Tatum has not been able to guard him. Um, and it's not even just because he's getting bullied. There's been a couple of just quick moves that Luca pulled that put Jay Tate, uh, you know, had his ankles kind of rolling around a little bit. So, it, like, no shade either way, like not being able to guard Luca fully one on one. But it comes back to like, we all love to forget that Jalen Brown came in this league as like a bruiser who was just a cerebral player and couldn't really shoot that well. And because he gained a shot and is able to put up 25 on any given night, we forgot that he can do the other stuff just as well when he decides to. And, and he t- he took the responsibility of Luca. Um, he's still, once he's off Luca, you see him very active on the boards, like you said. So I, I really like this bet as is. The other thing too, is the passing off of drives. Jalen Brown has never passed 55% of the time that he's driven. And that's what he's doing in this series, which is absolutely cuckoo bananas to watch him give up a, 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 a like a, contested shot that he could still make for uh, uh, an open look from three. But man, I guess by game 100 or game 99 of watching Drew Holiday and, and Derek White and Sam Hauser just rain down threes, you start to trust your teammates a lot and just go, well, I know that's probably going to go in. So um, speaking of which, segue, 
I'm going to take a little uh, same game parlay here for PJ and D white. The, uh, I guess two most, at least prolific three point shooters in this last game anyway, because, because Luca was one for seven, um, which actually now puts the Luca three point leader in jeopardy um, because now I believe Derek white has one more than him. So, I'm kind of hedging uh, my, my bet with Luca to lead the series in threes because I'm putting D white here three plus for him two plus for PJ. So starting with PJ back at home is the reason I'm taking this. And I was waiting for him to come back home as well. And I don't know why I didn't take it last game. I guess I was a little bit worried about the points. Nobody seems to go under their three point prop and over their points prop and then under their points prop and over their three prop like BJ Washington. There's no rhyme or reason, but I think at home is when you take him for two threes and that's his core prop. And, and granted it's minus 185 on DraftKings for him to hit over one and a half. But like, yeah, that's a great parlay piece then as is right. So that's why I'm putting it there with, with white to have three plus threes. Um, but for, for PJ over in seven of nine playoff games, including seven in a row in the first couple games of the, uh, of the Clippers series where they were back at home in, in games three and four, uh, he, he wasn't, you know, really wasn't that impressive to be honest with you. And he seemed pretty scared. Uh, and also like Luke and Kyrie were going absolutely ham in those games as well. We should mention that. So um, I, I don't think that's not going to be the case here necessarily, but he should be looking at six to seven to eight three point attempts. That's what he takes at home. He makes three point, uh, what were we at here? Three point, uh, two of them in these last seven games in the first two, he took uh, five and four uh, respectively. There, so there, there wasn't much to do with with two. Like I don't, I wouldn't like to take two threes for him if I thought he was only going to take four or five. That's where I'm at, and I think there was a little bit of um, a clear emphasis on him shooting in the second half when he started to pull a lot more threes. And granted, a couple of those threes came because it was like, well, PJ, you got to make a three, man, because someone's gonna have to make a three, and the ball came to you in rotation. But we don't got time to pass it back out to Luca or Kyrie, so you're gonna have to take this shot. I would hope that they would do that more frequently earlier in the game than just at the very end of it, right? Where they're like, okay, we don't have time for you to pass it back out, PJ. You got to take a contested three. And he started making them. Uh, and and that, that really boosted his confidence as we saw. Plus, he wasn't making crap inside the lane. So I guess it also added up that you might as well go go step out and take that three-pointer. Um, and I think he'll continue to be able to, to have that available to him. We've seen Derek White and him now guard each other, right? That's become the new matchup uh, in the last game and a half or so was that Derek White is guarding PJ, PJ is guarding Derek White. And neither of them have done a great job to be, to be frank, like, and, and to Derek White's credit, like, you know, PJ has got like four inches on him. So it's, it's never really going to be a much of a contested shot. If PJ has a little bit of room, that's going to be enough room for him to pull it off as opposed to when he was being guarded by a guy like Jason Tatum or, or at times like Al Horford even right. Who are just going to sell out on that three pointer and then he can drive by them. Well, it's the complete opposite with Derek White. He can't drive by Derek White nearly as easily as Al Horford. Um, and so when he's out there on the three point lines, like, well, you might as well pull this thing, man. Cause if you put it on the ground, you're probably going to get ripped if we're being honest so that's been what he what we saw when Derek White guarded him in this last game and I think he's going to become even more accustomed to that now that it's been about a game and a half of that being the matchup on the other side for the guy that's guarding him for Derek White what do you want me to say I mean the dude is a stud when it comes to, to being in the postseason dude is ice right it's just that simple ice in his veins not ice cold from three to be clear um he's he's wicked hot from three and, and he i think he kind of dispelled some of his bad shooting games already in, in the previous games but in this series already he's good to go um he's now up at about 8.1 threes per game in the play in the playoffs as a whole in this uh last two games he's looking at a couple a couple more attempts than that so what we're saying here is Derek white needs to go three for eight or three for nine in, which is what he does in his sleep right and i love the fact that he has been continuing to pull it i also like the fact that because drew holiday is playing in the corner and this I, you know I, I maybe i'm overthinking this but let me know what you think like drew holiday's playing in the corner he's shown a propensity to go play like Shaq. like we said like he's not really trying to shoot those threes that was actually a misread on my part at the beginning of the series was i was like drew take the open three you're going to be in the corner luke was not going to come out there and get you just go ahead and shoot it and he's been like nah don't worry about that fam i'm actually going to drive into the lane um because i'm not scared of no daniel gafford or no pj washington or nothing uh, and that's been really helpful for them because that's also upped his assists for Drew uh, to a guy like Derek White, as we saw in this last game where he – what an amazing play it was in the fourth quarter where he, like, drives in. He's got three dudes on him, and he throws a left-handed pass while his head is under the basket all the way back out to the wing to D. White for three. Beautiful. Thing of absolute beauty there. Uh, another really clutch play from him that helped win the game. And I just think D. D. White's going to continue to be on the end of those, and there's, like, a clear emphasis on him shooting as well for this squad. Um, so, yeah, three threes seems like an easy thing. for That honestly scares me a little bit more than the two for PJ. But if this hits, it's a nice little hedge for me to get some more money back because Derek White has now outscored uh, Luka Doncic from the three-point prop. Yeah, I mean, the Jays and D. White combined took 31 threes last game. 31. And, and uh, yeah, Drew one for three. Uh, and Al Horford, I think, uh, like one for three as well, right? Me too, actually, yeah. 
so yeah, I mean, it, it is a situation where those guys are cogs, cogs in the machine in, in terms of like, yeah, putting a little bit of pressure from Drew and, and being a facilitator and Horford just not being able to get his shot off too often unless they completely leave him. But it, it's left like the, the end result for these Celtics possessions is, is very often a good look for Derek White. Uh, so I, I think three threes is just fine. But uh, Derek Jones Jr., I will fade. Um, I'm going to go under five and a half points first and foremost, uh, which at FanDuel is about even money. And it's a little bit easier to swallow than the plus 120 you get for him to hit zero threes at DraftKings. I mean, that that could, you know, he could get one three down and still not get to six points. I, I feel pretty confident about that. Uh, I mean, but he's highly unlikely to get a three if Jason Kidd's going to pull him after 15 minutes. And I don't know if he's playing well enough defensively to justify being out there for longer than that. Right. I mean, the Celtics are shooting 53% in his coverage and and he has not really bothered Tatum as an individual defender. Um, He's too light for Jalen Brown, which you said going in. So I, I mean, it's just like, why is he out there when your, your offense is drowning, your spacing is drowning because this dude, I, I mean, he shot out of his out of his ahead of his skis in the last two series against Wolves and Thunder, and then just this, the finals lights like ooh, ice cold one for six, uh, and in, in particular since he had that air ball on a wide open shot in game two, just the confidence seems shot right. So I mean, he only had six front court touches in those sixteen minutes in game three, no catch and shoot opportunities uh, or or one. I'm sorry. Uh, he goes over for one and then he, and he takes a seat. Uh, and I would take some Tim Hardaway overs if we get those. I think he will get another opportunity to, to be that offensive spark that Dallas needs so badly. And then that's going to come in expensive Derek Jones. Um, yeah. So, uh, I, I mean, just not not enough playing time, I think, for him to get six points and, and just not not long for this series. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, th- these props are low. So uh, the books definitely agree with you. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know what to make of the rotation with the bigs. And I, I kind of put him in there to a degree because of his responsibilities are, are similar to those of like a Gafford or a Lively in terms of like getting it just further from the basket because he's got, been guarding a guy like Tatum. You could look at it. One, the only way that this screws you is, if, is the minutes, right? Because this is a heavy minutes play. Plus, like, obviously that broken shot is not is not really anything that worries anybody. But yeah, the they're, they they don't give up spot up shots. That's, that's, that's what it comes down to. Boston does not need to rotate. Um, they will rotate off of him if they have to, um, but they don't even really feel the need to. I mean, the way that they're not doubling down when Al Horford's guarding Luca or Al Horford's guarding uh, Kyrie, they don't care. Like they're like, it's fine. Even when we don't have uh Chris Stapps in here, we're fine. Like you can go ahead and get these twos. We're going to hit a three in one of the next two possessions. I think it's a big part of the mentality is that three point shooting um, and something that, you know, has been talked about ad nauseum, but man, it, it impacts so many other facets of the game when they have that level of comfortability with, you know, the, the confidence they have in their three point shooting. So I uh, love DJJ really hate to, to say that it, he might be done with this series, but uh, if they're going to be looking for offense, he's going to be the guy that comes out as a result. Ain't going to be Gafford or, or lively. One of those two dudes will always be in. So uh, let's close it out. I've got I've got two bets here. Let me give you the first one that I like, and it's a it's another Luca turnover bet. I'm going under four and a half. It's minus one forty two. It's been as low as minus one seventy two or one eighty. So like I, I'm fine with minus one forty. I'm gonna put a good amount on this. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like one point, I want to get one unit back on this. So I'm gonna have one point four units on him to go under five turnovers. And I I don't know. That's kind of disrespectful at this point, man. Like he's gone under in seventy percent of playoff games. He had the one spike of eight turnovers uh, against this team here in game two. Really bad look for him, obviously, there. Um, But, you know, moving forward, like, it's the same concept for why I've liked this consistently, in addition to the fact that Boston doesn't turn the ball over. I mean, it was really, really – I've known it throughout the season that they weren't good at – forcing turnovers i had completely forgotten that they were the they forced the least turnovers of any team in the league um which is wild considering that they score on a lot of those turnovers so they still actually have a decent number when it comes to points off of turnovers better than worse in the league anyway which is where their their turnover uh forced turnover percentage is at and you know with the way that this this mavs offense works it's iso ball so it's your turn my turn which one takes the ball out of lucas hands for about you know at least for 
uh, the, in terms of who's going to shoot the ball about 30% of the time with the way that Kyrie's usage goes up. Right. And then you've also got the fact that like, he's looking to shoot. Uh, I, I think, you, you know, we, we both prefer under in his uh, assists to anything else necessarily. If you're going to take an under for Luca, I would agree with that. I, it's been the case. He had one game where it was like 12 assists and on what, like 14 potentials, uh, 17 potentials, whatever. Still very high rate of assists. Uh, and I don't think we expect the shooting to necessarily improve too much for guys not named Kairuka for, for Dallas. So he'll continue to have the ball in his hands, obviously a ton, but Boston doesn't force turnovers and he's always got Kyrie as the outlet rather than having to force anything uh, and make any spectacular passes. So I'm going to go under on the assist for him. And my last bet here too, that I want to add is I do like Kyrie in the first quarter, man. Uh, it's, and, and I like it because it's plus money. It's over five and a half. For him to get uh, over five and a half is plus 108 on FanDuel, which I was really shocked by. Like, I thought if they were going to give us five and a half, that we were going to have to take it at like minus 130. Uh, and the fact that we're getting about 40 cents better than that for him to, to, to get six points, I like it. Now, he's gone over in the last two. And if you are if you want to ex- extrapolate that out and look at the, the other games, uh, it's not going to be good. So don't use the prior uh, games of the playoffs to, to support your, your bet if you want to make this one alongside what I'm doing. But like, I, I think that with five field goal attempts, if he really has come out of a little bit of a rut uh, that he was in, and like you were kind of mentioning earlier uh, in, in the best bets video, like if we think that he's overcome, well, let's put it this way. He's not playing a TD guard. Let's just call it what it is, right? He stomped on Lucky. He's tried the Sage and ain't worked, like you mentioned. Uh, so now he's really got to rely on not being a TD Garden, apparently. And that that's a big part of it. Like, everything is a little bit looser now for him. So I, I really wish I would have actually hit first field goal of the game for Kyrie uh, in this last one because of, I think the, the emphasis on getting him involved early so that it's not like, all right, Kyrie, it's a third quarter. We'd really love for you to start taking some shots so that we could, you know, get you involved. Like, I think he's still going to be good early on because they're going to want that to be the case for him early on so six points on let's say he takes the five shots again or the six or seven that he's taken the last two that would be wonderful but at the average of five shots per game in the last 10 in the first quarter I like him to make three and also obviously now that the three ball has at least gone in a couple times for him like it did in this last game should be good to keep shooting those uh, and at least make maybe one of those in the first quarter as well yeah, I mean, you know, I like Kyrie based on <clears throat> on the props I was throwing out there to him to score and not to assist. And and I have got some stuff in here on Luca under eight and a half assists as well. The Celtics, uh, their game plan has just been so good. I mean, he had eight assists in the second half of game two after he went unconscious. Otherwise, like he, he's not even like getting many passes off for potential assists, as you outlined, seven and a half per game in the other two. So that seems rock solid. As far as the turnovers, I will warn you, Scott Foster has not been a crew chief yet for this finals. And I think that makes him the game for crew chief. And he would love nothing more than to uh, get, get Luca for a couple uh, forearm shivers and give, give him a couple turnovers and, and uh, you know, have him wind his way to the bench. But I, I mean, the Mavs apparently have won their last 10 with Scott Foster refing. So do with that what you will. Uh, if, if, if you want to back Dallas because the, the quote extender is out there, clearly the last crew didn't, didn't get any sort of memo as far as extending it for Dallas. They, they were happy to just foul Luca out. Uh, but yeah, let, let's see who's, uh, who's reffing, uh, the crew chief there the next game. No, did, didn't you get the memo? Tony brothers is the extender now. Uh, Scott Foster is a retired extender, so yeah. I'm not sure how it's going to work, but I, I'll well, tell you got what game two and didn't help Dallas out much either. Tony brothers, because I don't, I'm, I'm not really buying into any of it yeah. to be honest with you. Um, and I, I, anybody there that's calling conspiracies, which I know you're not, but anybody that is, why would the conspiracy be fewer games in the NBA finals? That makes no sense. So uh, I, I hear you uh, on, on all that. And I do like think referee information can be relevant. I don't know how relevant it is here. And, and I, I, I'm fine with the turnover play either way, but got a good amount of bets in here for hopefully not the last video of the year for the NBA, but we will see obviously what happens here in game four. Subscribe to that page. Continue to follow along. If it is, in fact, the last NBA game, we still have plenty of content running on the lines.com and on the YouTube page. So continue to follow along. Until we see you next, happy betting.